So now when we go further, it says, part B, the first rope is strong. Uh, what does that mean? Well, the whole idea here is that this tension, um, you know, if it exceeds a certain amount, it'll snap, right? It only has a certain capacity. But what the, the question is telling us, in much the same way that the word light means there's no weight that you need to worry about, uh, the word strong here indicates it's like got, you know, infinite tension. It's got so much tension, you don't need to worry about it. So therefore, um, the first rope I can disregard. The second rope will break if the tension in it exceeds 98 Newtons. So I need to think about um, this rope here, T2, and I need to find the maximum value of M for which the flower pot will remain in equilibrium. So you can imagine if you have a super light flower pot, it's not pulling down much at all. So therefore, the upward forces just keep it staying still. There's not enough to um, you know, rip it off the ceiling. But if I exceed, if my value of M exceeds um, the tension in T2, I don't have to worry about T1, and then it's going to snap and um, the flower pot will not remain in equilibrium anymore. So how do I uh, do this? Well, in much the same way that I did part A by thinking about the horizontal forces being in balance, I'm going to do the same thing with part B but doing it vertically, right? That's uh, what I was leaving out here. I did all of the X's here and up here I'm going to be taking care of the Y's. Um, so I should do my expressions here so I can say, well, let's just have a look at this diagram while I'm at it. Y1 is this um, uh, this um, length here, right? So if this is 30 degrees, there's a 30 degrees here, it's um, alternate angles on parallel lines. So if there's a 30 in here, then Y1 is adjacent and T1 is the hypotenuse, right? So much the same way that a sine 30 gives me this relationship, I'm basically just gonna do cos 30, right? So I'll stick with red since that's the color I use for that triangle. Cos 30 degrees equals adjacent, that's what we just ex uh, established, on hypotenuse. So Y1 is going to be equal to, I'm multiplying T1 to the other side, but cos 30 degrees is root 3 on 2 T1. Okay, so there's in that triangle, and in much the same way, I'm going to be doing the same thing in the blue triangle, but you're probably getting a sense here. Instead of sine 60, it's going to be cos 60, and that's going to be my a half. So let's do that. Laying this out nice and neatly, cos of 60 degrees equals y2 on t2. So that gives me y2 being the subject, um, t2 on 2. And hopefully there's kind of this symmetry here that you recognize from part A. All right, now in much the same way, I'm gonna do this reasoning here, right? This was um, making a statement about being in equilibrium horizontally, but now I'm thinking about being in equilibrium vertically. So I need to think about what my vertical forces are and what they all sum to. So here I've got Y1 and Y2 both heading up, and then I've got um, M, the mass times gravity, which they're giving to me as 9.8 going in the opposite direction, downward. So Y1 plus Y2 going up, um, m times gravity going down. So therefore I can say y1 plus y2 equals um, the mass times 9.8 was their particular value. Okay, so everything's balanced out vertically. Now at this point here, I'm just gonna take these two results here and here and substitute them in. So that gives me uh, root three on two t1 plus uh, t2 on two equals 9.8 m. All right. Now, what am I trying to do here? I've like written a bunch of equations, that's great, but what am I trying to solve for? If you return back to the question, we remember that the first rope is strong. That's another way of saying, I don't really need to worry about T1, okay? It's sort of so large that it's not gonna figure in um, whether the flower pot's mass is gonna be a problem. What I really need to think about is T2. So you can see in this equation, I've got T1 and T2, but what I wanna do is I wanna substitute out T1, get rid of that, you don't need to worry about it. There's no solving for that required. T2 is what I want to solve for. So I need to get rid of all my T1s, replace them with T2s. Now what that tells you is if you have a look back up here, um, I can't use this substitution um, as it is stated, because if I substituted T2 into here, I'd get rid of T2s and I'd end up with T1s, but I just established, I don't need to worry about T1, it's the you know sufficiently large quantity that I can, I can ignore it. So therefore what I'm gonna do is just slightly shift this around, I can say that T1 equals root three times T2, and this is what I'm gonna substitute, this line right here, I'm gonna substitute that, there, and then I'll just have an equation that's all about T2s. So I'm gonna call that, let's just call that from, in fact, I don't need to label it because I'm just gonna say from part A. Um, so I'm gonna say, but from part A, 
um, I'm gonna say t1 equals root three t2. Therefore, all right, let's do our substitution now. So I've got root three on two times root three times t2 plus t2 on two equals 9.8 times the mass. All right, now this point here, um, what, what am I trying to solve for? I've got two unknowns. I've got T2 and then I've got the mass. Have a look back at the question because it will guide us, right? It says the second rope will break if the tension in it exceeds 98 newtons. So T2 can go up to 98. And if I go past that, then I'm in trouble. I'm trying to find the maximum value of M. So M's our unknown. So I still want M to be in our equation. It's going to be a substitution for T2 that I'm going to do, right? So I can say I need a... Uh, I, I think I can just sneak it in up here. Let's go this way. Okay, um, I want to say, um, you know, rope will break um, after T2 equals 90. Eight. So I'm going to substitute in T2 equals 98 because that's like just before it breaks, right? So therefore I can say um, root 3 on 2 times root 3 um, times 98 plus 98 on 2 equals 9.8 M. So I've satisfactorily gotten rid of every other unknown except for M and that's what I'm going to solve for. Now you can see on the left hand side it will help me if I tidy things up. I'm not going to do 98 divided by 2 because I've got 98s flying around so I might as well try and um, collect a few like terms. If I pull that 98 out the front what does it leave me with? And the answer is this is root 3 times root 3 so that's 3 all on 2 and I got that on 2 from here. And then because I pulled out that factor of 98, that just leaves me with a half there. So that's 9.8 over that side. Um, what am I getting? Well, uh, this is going to be 4 over 2, which is 2. So therefore, I've got um, 2 on this side. I'm going to go ahead and divide through by um, 9.8 on both sides as well. So that gives me instead of 98 here, that 9.8. 8 being divided gives me a 10, like so. So there's my M, and make that the subject. That gives me 20. And of course, um, newtons are a unit, which include kilograms in them. So actually, that mass is 20 kilograms. So have a think about how we went through that, right? I had to make sure I used my diagram effectively, um, resolve my forces, use some trigonometry, and then I wanted to make sure I combined everything, you know, look at the um, the horizontal forces and how they balance, look at the vertical forces and how they balance, and then off you go.